Hey, hey, my name is Andrew, and I'm going to show you how to set up touchscreen macros like Junkie Excel inside of Cubase 8. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is click off of that, <laughs> go to the key commands box. This is based off of the uh, Junkie Excel has been doing a really cool video series on his workflow and just some tips on writing, different things that he does. And so it's been really cool to see you know a professional guy that works with uh, big budget films uh, kind of what he does so anyway uh, he did a specific tutorial on his touchscreen setup so I just wanted to show how some of these macros are created and kind of where they can be found so the other ones were a bit more complicated they have to do with the logical editor uh, so you can bring that up and then I'll show you the first one I made was copy CC1 to CC11. Um, here it is right here. You might want to pause the video. You could just copy it to your Cubase session and save the preset. Name it whatever you want. Um, but the basic trick here is type one, type is equal controller and's already in there. You click the plus button to add a line. And then under here, you would actually select value two. Um, which happens to stand for the mini controller number after you select this parameter, <laughs> kind of weird. And then right here you just type in uh, whichever mini controller number you're wanting to uh, copy. In this case it's CC1, so we just type in a 1 and it automatically knows the name. Uh, we get on here to second section and we would add a line, or I think it may have already added one. Uh, then we do value 1 set to fixed value and we choose the parameter we want CC1 to be copied to. Uh, in this case, I, I wanted it to be copied to uh, CC11. And then under function, we select insert. Very important. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And then I have linked it to a, I bet that fan is really loud. <laughs> I've linked it to my touch off template. So I'll go ahead and press the button right now for copying CC1 to CC11. So there it is. You can use it to copy to CC7 or CC2, um, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, another one was to, you know, what if you want to copy the modulation dynamics to another track? So you've got two cello tracks and you want to you want to kind of start with the same dynamics, dynamics as the other one, but you want to keep your, you know, your different performance um, of your actual MIDI data. Uh, I created a macro for that as well. Um, this one's a little bit different. It goes between the logical editor and actually making a macro within Cubase. I created a logical preset called CC1 Copy. Um, you'll notice it's the same as the last one. Uh, the trick is that on the bottom there's nothing um, and then the other thing is under function you want to click select um, and so if we apply that you'll notice it's selected all the CC1 data on this track so that's that's the first part of it uh, the next part is going into the key commands window uh, you'd add a new macro and go to copy CC1 and what you'll do is you'll come over here to your folder, your logical preset, and you'd find the CC1 copy, you click add it, add it. And then you're gonna find this command, uh, search for it in this box right here, it is called transport locate selection. Click add, and then come over here, and it'll do the same, type this command in up here, edit copy, add that command. And then click okay. Well, and then, <laughs> Well, and then you want to go up here to the macros folder, find uh, this name, copy CC1, and assign it a key command, um, which you can, again, you can trigger from your touch OS template. So what we've done is, um, I'll press my button now and watch, so it pops up. So it's selected this data and it's copied it to the clipboard and just the dynamics data, not the MIDI data data data. <laughs> All right, so now if I want to place it on this track, I go into the key editor and I made a I just went ahead and made a button for it, uh, but it's just paste. And there it is. Uh, you don't have to uh, 
that's it. You don't have to line up your cursor, uh, you know, anything special. You just click, click, and it's done. Uh, so it just kind of takes the guesswork out. And basically, uh, what I did there, since it's copied to the clipboard, if you just open up the key editor, all you do is a simple, actual, just plain paste. Uh, you know, Command V on a Mac or Control V on PC. Um, and that will only paste the data, not the dynamic data, not the MIDI data. All right, so that's that part. Um, you, again, you can do that between CC11 or CC7. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, you just have to switch up your logical editor preset. Another thing was uh, being able to raise this data by a specific amount. So we go to the logical editor, and I'm going to pull up CC 1 out of 10. So once again, all this top part is the same as the other two presets I just showed you. Uh, but down here, we've got value 2, and the operation is add. You see there's 1, 4, subtract as well. And under the parameter, we just put 10. That's how much I want to change it by. I could put 1, 5, 20, 50, whatever I want. Um, however, you know, harsh or fine you want that to be. Um, then down here under function, uh, you want to select transform. Again, uh, you know, all you've got to do is go to the key commands box and find the folder for project logical preset and you know find the name over here and give it a key command sign it to your template and then that's good and the reason this is awesome is um, because of course you know you can just select this and you can do this with a mouse you know which is great for one track uh, but what if you've got a whole string section or a whole brass section that you want to uh, you know, make a little bit louder, a little bit softer, and you, you kind of want to quickly hear that change. Um, you know, all you've got to do is just select it, and you press your button. And you can see it right there. You can see it kind of going down. <laughs> see it's going up, going down. Um, and that's the CC1 dynamics. You can do it where it'll affect both CC1 and CC11 at the same time. Um, or, you know, in my case, I additionally made one um, that's actually the expression, the CC11 right there moving up and down. And I've made one for CC1 and CC11, um, but it's just super helpful. I used it over the weekend on a project, and it was really fast, you know, when I decided, oh, maybe the string should be a little bit softer, and I just quickly pressed my, you know, my button, and, and there it was. Um, I could hear the change instantly, and I didn't have to worry that, uh, you know, when I came in here and I selected the whole thing and I moved it down a little bit and I, you know, moved to the other one and selected this part and moved it down a little bit and hoped that they were the same. Uh, you know, you, you spend a while getting your dynamics just how you want them and, uh, you know, you get that ratio just right and there's just something really cool about it uh, when it happens. It this feels really glued. Uh, so being able to change every track at the same time is, is a big deal. Uh, so that's a really great key command to have. Uh, so some of the commands are just built into Keybase. So it's really simple. Uh, so if you bring up the key commands dialog box and you just click agents, Keybase 8 has a lot of visibility agents is what they're called. So one he did was data by cursor. So any tracks that have data that are underneath the cursor will only be visible. And then he did another one where it was data by locators. So any tracks that have mini data on them that are between the locators will only show. Um, and then there's kind of the toggle, which is show all tracks, which reverses those things. Uh, so you can kind of create quick keys for these in Cubase and assign them to your TouchOS template and kind of have a really quick navigation deal. All right, so another one was uh, there were some to do with MIDI. Uh, we had fixed links. Um, which makes this, these all the same length. We had one for velocity right here again, just assign it, assign it a quick key. And there was also one um, kind of a long one. Uh, quantize MIDI event ends. Um, it was just quantize ends, I think is what he called it. And it basically takes the ends right here and it would quantize them uh, to the grid. Uh, so it can be really helpful if you've got something like you've got 
you know, two or three blocks that represent different samples for a, say, a, a crash swell, and you want them to end at the same spot, uh, you know, you, you play them or you draw them in, and they're going to be a little bit off, and you just click that button, it'll automatically snap them to the grid. It's just kind of a quicker way of working with MIDI. Um, so... Okay, so I'm gonna show some of those really quick. All right, so um, fixed links. Boop. <laughs> so now they're all the same. I set mine to 16. I don't know what that is. Okay, <laughs> 16. All right, so let's move it to eight. So if I put it on one eighth right here, the mini grid, fixed links, and now they are an eighth in length. Um, then we've got Let's see, we've got fixed velocity. So see, now they're all the same velocity, I'll undo that. Um, we've got quantize ends. See how they're moved. Quantize many event ends. You can just press that. Boop. Now they're the same, nice and tidy. Um, but anyway, uh, that's, that's all. There are some more I'll probably look at, uh, you know, figuring out, but those were really helpful in my workflow already and I hope that helps you guys out and you know definitely I really appreciate Junkie XL posting that material it was really neat to see and very inspiring and I hope this just kind of helps explain uh, some of the back end a little bit more eventually <laughs> I think in a day or day or two or three or four um, I'm gonna try to have a blog post up on my blog uh, there'll be a link to that in the video description, which is kind of some pictures of the logical editor, so it's a little bit easier to look at. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this, and thank you very much. <laughs>